Okay, now I want to take a look at some of the key properties that you can use to control your fractured static mesh. So I'm going to jump back into the content browser. We will double click on the fractured column and I'm just going to take my static mesh editor and space a few things out to maximize our screen space a little bit. Now what I'm going to do is cover some of the key properties you're going to be using most frequently. Starting at the very top, you have your overall chance of physics chunk. With this set to one, every time you shoot a chunk inside the, the level, there's a 100% chance that that chunk is going to get a physical copy that bounces around the level. As you start to pull this down, you get a lower and lower probability of that, meaning that some of the chunks will just start to disappear as, a cho as opposed to firing off some sort of a dynamic version. Now, down from here, we have chunk angular velocity or chunk angvel. This is how much spin is going to be applied to a chunk as it flies away. We have its linear horizontal scale and linear velocity. Linear velocity is how fast it's going to fly away when it's broken off. Now, a chunk will fly away in the direction of the overall surface normal of the mesh. Meaning if you break off a chunk on the left-hand side and it's you know pretty much a flat left-hand direction, it's going to fly off perpendicularly to that surface. So you can increase that speed here. You also have a, a horizontal scale. Increasing this means that your chunk is going to tend to fly out horizontally more than vertically. It's very useful if you kind of want to get that almost ring-like explosion. Next, we have composite chunks explode on impact. If we were to take this fractured mesh and kind of saw it off halfway through, the top half will come crashing down and then fall over. If you'd rather that top half to hit the ground and crumble, just switch this on. Solves that problem. Now, moving down from here, our next key area of interest are the explosion settings. These allow you to control what's going to happen to the fractured static mesh if it's influenced by an explosion, such as a vehicle exploding uh, or anything else that causes an actual forceful explosion in your game. So if an explosion hits it, what's the chances it's going to spawn a physics chunk for each piece? Uh, the overall scale max and scale min, so you can actually resize the physics chunks that come out based on whether they're hit by an explosion. So if an explosion hits, you want it to have much smaller pieces like tinier debris, you can change that here. And there's a random value here, so you can choose a min and a max. It'll pick a value in between. You can also increase the velocity of your physics chunks by, it's kind of like a multiplier here. With a, a default of one, that means they're going to pop out at their normal speed. But if an explosion hits, you want them to move a little faster, you can increase your explosion velocity scale. Fix isolated chunks will more or less override the effect of using support chunks. This means if we were to, again, saw our column in half, if this were active, the upper chunks wouldn't go anywhere. They'd be fixed, stuck in place. Now, just kind of moving down from here, we have a fragment destroy effect scale and a fragment destroy effect. We can add something to this by clicking the add new item button. And what this will store is a particle system. So if you want to get like a little explosive particle system, you can plug it in here, and then as you break pieces off, that explosion will spawn right there in that location. So you can add you know, smoke flying off or sparks or anything like that. And then you have an effect scale if maybe, maybe the explosion you're using was actually intended to blow up a vehicle, and when it blows up chunks of your mesh, it's a little oversized, you, know, you can scale things back right here. Now I'm going to go ahead and nuke that out. Now we have fragment health scale. As you increase this, fragments will become harder to break off. As you decrease it, they're going to become easier to break off. By default, they're already pretty easy, though. You can also do a max and min health. Now, by default, the way this works is that larger pieces have more health and smaller pieces have less health. So you can kind of influence that relationship here. Now, as we scroll down from here, another key area is LOD info. Now, this is critical. In fact, we're going to change this right now. LOD info is always there with a the static mesh. It allows you to control the material applied to a static mesh. And by default, it's always got one element. Currently, this has a couple of elements. In fact, it's got an extra one down here at the very bottom that uh, we're not actually going to be using. But you'll generally see element 0, which is your basic static mesh, and element 1, which is your internal uh, material. So as we were breaking off pieces of this mesh and you were seeing that blue and white checker null material, this is why. It's because currently this material was set to none. What I'm going to do is expand element zero, grab the cement block material applied to the outside of our mesh, hit control C, 
and paste this with control V into these uh, slot one material as well. That means the inside of our mesh will also have a concrete material, but you could set it to something else. If you wanted to make maybe a custom material that looked a little hot or molten, you know, you could make use of that. Now, let's kind of slide down from here. We've got a couple of other things. We have normal, physics, chunk, scale, max, and min. Now, by normal, what they mean is when a physics chunk breaks off from something other than an explosion, such as gunfire. You can give a random value here if you want your physics chunks to come off at different sizes. Uh, as we kind of move down from here, you can slice using core collision. This is on by default, and this means that since we put a core in there, you'll get a, a nice change in your shape to kind of make way for the core. Whether or not you want physics chunks to be spawned, if you switch this off, you won't actually get those individually reactive physics chunks. Your pieces will just appear to just vanish, really. Down from here, we have uniform fragment health. This completely does away with the large chunks getting more health than smaller chunks. Everybody now has the same health if you switch this on. And really, these are the big values, the ones that you're going to be using more often than not. So... Let's go ahead and close this out, and I'm going to go ahead and immediately click on Rebuild Lighting. And as soon as I've done this, this will take any changes such as uh, the internal material. It'll go ahead and get those applied so that now, when we jump into the level and blow off pieces of the, of the fractured static mesh, we should see that they no longer have the null material inside. So let's jump inside real quick and take a look at this. And as I blow these off, notice we have a nice material on the inside now. So there is a quick look at putting together your own fractured static meshes and uh, adjusting their properties accordingly. That is going to wrap things up for this video. Thanks a lot.